Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, we're into the, 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 the last stretch of the day, and I can see the room emptying as I speak. Um, so, uh, frightened as you are to talk about fundraising, um, my presentation today contains a few films from our FITB campaign, and, and se several of you will have seen some of them already, um, because our campaign was put out there to tell people all about EB, uh, to get people behind it, and hopefully to raise a lot of money. Um, the presentation contains a number of the key messages that we need to get across to the general public, um, messages that we can, with your support, amplify. Each of these, each of these films contains one or two really serious core messages. Um, the first one with Mason is all about raising awareness. Because, of course, EB is not well known. The public need to understand a lot more about this condition. In Mason's case, he's about to go to secondary school. The school need to know what he can, what he can't do. Um, they need to understand the complexities of, of, of his EB. And when it comes to the general public, there's a huge opportunity for all of us to raise awareness by working together. Wherever he goes, there's a fan, he has sheepskins everywhere to keep his, um, stop his skin getting damaged. Um, he has a mobility scooter at school. Uh, he can't, obviously has days where he can't walk, so a scooter does help him. And it also, in the playground, he can get about, if his friends are moving around the playground, he can follow them rather than rely on somebody in a wheelchair to push him. When he got to sort of three, four years old, my biggest fear was school, because I know it's a very rare condition. It's letting him go into an environment with lots of little children and how easy he can get hurt, it was worrying for both of us as parents. Well, he goes to all the home matches. Um, uh, we watch it again and again on TV. <laughs> because it is so rare, a lot of people don't understand what it's about. Um, and then sometimes if they see Mason or some of the other children when they're out, they have silly comments about have they been burnt or lots of other things they can say. So it's, yeah, it's massive. A lot of people need, need to understand what it's about. It's hard as parents when people look at you and judge you and they look at Mason like we've hurt him. Um, the comments we've had is just really hard to take as a parent because people are obviously judging you thinking that you've hurt your son and things. So, and also Mason's in the big wide world now. We've never hidden him from anything. We've given him as normal life as possible. And people need to be aware of what he goes through and, and what the condition's all about. So it's, yeah, it's getting the awareness out there, and I think the more people that know, the better. It, people know Mason then as Mason rather than the little boy with EB or the little boy with sore skin, and that he's a person at the end of the day, and I don't want, I don't want him to be different from anyone else, really. Okay, um, with Oliver's story, it's all about the need to promote on social media, because if you want to talk to lots of people, and you want lots of people to talk about what you're talking about, then you've got to engage with social media. The EB community is very active in all areas of social media, and we want you to engage with our stories to help promote them to the outside world. I say to everyone, I cope because Oliver copes, but it's tough. It is tough, very tough. Um, Oliver has, um, you don't talk about it a lot, but Oliver goes through five hours of dressings every morning five hours, um, which has huge limitations on daily life. It would be amazing for people to just recognise like what the condition was rather than just staring and wondering and sort of like you hear a child ask the question, their parents like, oh, what's, what's wrong with that boy? I want to fight EB because it's not easy to live with. So GT, um, sore skin, blistering, uh, tiredness. Um, so with people's help, we can fight EB. If we can get it going um, on social media um, and spread about this cruel condition, um, it, as Oliver himself said, it will help future generations and their 
instead of people wondering what the hell is wrong with um, your boy, has he been burnt, etc, etc, people will, after a while, hopefully, begin to recognise EB. That's my hope, that's what should be done, and hopefully we'll crack it by this fight EB. I hardly need to mention this to all of you here today about EB being complicated, but the general public just don't get it. How often has the false comparison been made between EB and eczema? Um, epidermal Epidermolysis bullosa in itself is hard to say, and most people don't understand it. And then trying to identify and explain each different type, almost impossible to the uninformed. So we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about EB as EB from now on, and hope that we get the question back, what is EB? EB can be quite a difficult illness to cope with and um, every day is different. There are some good days and there are some bad days. Um, I think generally I'm coping okay, um, but there are some days when you would kind of just go out and cry your, te cry your eyes out and it can be quite difficult to see him in pain. When he was born he had um, no skin on his necks and um, the birth trauma is somewhat healed, but his legs are still very, very fragile and all his body is um, extremely fragile, so he's very prone to develop blisters and wounds. People just assume he's got eczema or um, chicken pox, and it could be a time-consuming exercise to go out for, just a simple task to go out for shopping and constantly explaining what does he have and, and just to take him to nursery or to play group. You know, it can be really time consuming each time you go somewhere new you have to explain what he's got. I'm fighting it before James because it's an awful condition and um, people affected by EB they deserve a better life. How many people really understand the stresses and strains that is put upon every member of a family by this condition? How do we explain it in such a way that's not gonna turn people away from us. People need to understand that EB is constantly there and at the same time that there is life to be lived. The nurse from the Thomas Reed, Leslie, she organized, uh, she organized a new representative from Deborah to came over, explain us everything. When you talk to people, they, they basically they're clueless. They don't know what condition is and, and how how challenging it is for the and painful for the child, for parents, for the family, because basically you literally have to spend twenty four hours. You know, it's non stop. You cannot take holidays. You cannot say no. I need a day off. You, you cannot. You have to do it. We have to find a cure to you know to raise awareness and to raise money for kids like him. To have a proper life, to have a you know, free life, actually. Yeah, it's your turn now. <laughs> um, Heather and Wendy's story. Um, the importance of research. I don't really need to stress how important research is. You've been hearing all about it today. Um, if our funded research can make living with EB that little bit easier, then will it, it will impact upon so many people today and in the future. And of course, our ultimate ambition of one day to find a cure. I have EB, but EB is not me. Um, I, I'm still a person, I've still got a brain. If I'm out, ask me, don't stare, don't assume. I'm more than happy to explain. I, I like to raise awareness for EB. Um, and mainly just, just treat a person as a person um, because it's their skin rather than their brain. EB is basically a skin condition that affects not only the skin externally but internally. Um, also it can affect the bones as well, um, osteoporosis. Um, and basically any friction or rubbing can cause blisters or rip the skin off. My back's had no skin on it for 25 years. Yeah. Um, 
now, so it's it, it's always open and it always will be. The research is really important, and not just for Heather and, and those her age, but also obviously the children to come. I mean, what we want to do is, is to stamp it out. We like people to ask, and then we can tell them, then we can explain about EB, and then somebody else will pass that on in future. I don't know any different. Um, moaning isn't going to cure it. Um, so I, I don't see the point in, in moping around. And um, yeah, obviously I have days of when, why me? Um, but I think most EB sufferers have those days. Um, but I, I can't, you can't just sit at home and think that it's the worst life in the world because it's not. Um, you could be a lot worse off or I could be a lot worse off. Um, and you've just got to get on with it really. We describe EB too often as rare or very rare. By doing that, we put it in a place where most people think that they don't need to know about it because we're calling it rare. We need to change this if we're going to raise awareness amongst the general public. After all, it is not so rare. I actually didn't know that there was going to be so much support in the UK. The people who have EB in the UK, they're like, I've never imagined to see so many people together with EB. I have to take care of it, put cream on like this. Morning I have to put my cream on and do my blisters. I have a bath uh, with my special lotion. Deborah has been amazing. I, you know, I don't know where I would be if Deborah wasn't here. And because initially when I moved over, they helped me set up everything. People say it's a rare disease, but so many people have it in the UK and also all over the world. And it's really important that we need to find, we must find a cure for this horrible disease because it doesn't only affect the children but also the close family and friends around them. So it's really important that people support EB and join us in the fight of EB and then get a cure, find a cure for EB. Message here, really clear. Let's fight EB together. Heather, go for it. For me, having EB simplex, it mostly means that it affects my hands and my feet. So the skin just splits apart and blisters really easily. So some of the year I have to use my wheelchair because I just can't put socks on or stand up or do anything. I try not to let it affect me. I try and just carry on and do everything that anyone else would and probably more just to prove a point that nothing's going to stop me. I'm a tank driving instructor. I can unicycle. I grew up climbing, caving, mountain biking. I still walk on sprung stilts because I find them really helpful because they take the pressure out of footsteps walking. I'll literally give anything a try just to see if I can do it. I was the first person in my family to be diagnosed with EB. So my dad, my granddad, the rest of my family, we all knew that our skin blistered really easily. But my dad never let it stop him. He just figured that he got blisters easier. So he taught me to cave when I was three. He taught me to mountain bike. He took me multi-pitch climbing as soon as I was capable of doing it and like the strength and the stamina. So. My dad's always inspired me to just keep going. We don't let anything or anyone stand between us and what we want. I've always had EB. I don't know what it's like to walk without pain. I don't want the same for my children, for my friends, for anybody else. I want, if I can, to be able to stop EB in my generation and like part of that fight and fundraising and just getting what Deborah is and what EB is and getting it out there and known so that we get as much help and support as we can so nobody else has to go through what I do. This, um, this campaign was conceived um, almost a year ago today uh, when I met James Dunn. Um, uh, he spoke from this stage, although obviously not here. Um, and I talked to him about, okay, you can clearly inspire an audience. Um, how do you fancy trying to open some wallets as well? Um, and he was an inspiration. Um, I'm obviously not going to show his video, um, but you know, just wanted to acknowledge what a huge part he's played in, in leading this campaign from, from the start. Um, one thing that we're often asked about um, is how to introduce 
the subject of EB, particularly in schools, um, because one of the most difficult audiences to introduce it to is children, particularly those of primary school, um, secondary school too in some occasions. So I thought I'd just show you another film, um, which is a really good example of how it could be introduced in a sensitive way and an easy to understand way, because all the films that I've just shown you are perhaps in some way um, distressing to look at or don't really give the, enough of a story behind it. Um, so this is a really good example of, of what you can use if you want to introduce it um, to your own child's school. I'm Leighton. I'm 10 years old and I have EB. My skin is as fragile as a butterfly's wings. Everything I touch can hurt me. The charity Deborah helps fund scientists to look into my DNA and find ways to make my world less painful. With Deborah's support, kids like me can have a brighter future. So, um, the results of our campaign. Well, so far we've realised over £280,000, um, but far more than that is we've helped manage to raise awareness of EB in a huge number of different areas. Um, and we've done this by telling the stories of just a fraction of the EB community. Just think about what we could do if we were able to work with all of you. But let's be realistic, we only have limited resources and we only need to manage the stories that we want to tell and where we need to tell them. And most importantly, we need to be very much aware that not all of you want your stories to be told. Um, but if you do want your story to be told, if you do want to become a part of our campaign going forward, come and talk to the fundraising team. Let us tell your story and together we will fight EB. Now, Claire asked me to reduce my presentation from the 20 minutes down to the 11 minutes you've just heard. So is that enough for you? Okay. Thank you very much.